Oh, my apologies. I did not realize I have to have this little screen up. Um, my, my webcam is off right now, so welcome back, guys. This, uh, this series is just going to be, or this episode is just going to be a quick rundown of this new trade journaling software that I'm using. Um, so it's called Tradeful IQ, and this software is actually geared towards funded accounts. So my good friend Kit put this together. Uh, it's kind of like in beta, beta phase right now. Um, we're going to try and work on adding a bunch of more features to this. So we have Rodrigo as part of our development team. Uh, we have a lot of data as far as performance goes. And we're going to try and input uh, some of some of his data that he's collected over the years is from a performance coach and input it as a, you know, kind of AI uh, feedback. So it'll help you guys improve upon some things that you might be struggling with. All right. So uh, if you, can, you can check it out at app.tradefuliq.com. There's a lot of features about this that I like uh, because it's geared towards funded accounts. So I'm just going to walk you through how to add an account, uh, what kind of features it actually provides, and then I'll get into uh, how I'm doing on the funded engineer, engineer account. So let's just, um, I guess for you know, for practice, I'm going to basically walk you through you know how to add an account, and we'll just go through some of the parameters that are standard as far as like FTMO, um, because it's like the industry standard right now. Well, not, I guess not industry standard, but you know, they're one of the well-known firms. So I'm gonna come in here, all right, we're gonna add an account. So you can see that I have my fund engineer here, your account in here. What we're gonna do is actually add in FTMO, sign up page today, we'll do $100,000. How many days have I traded? Uh, so let's say if you add an account late and you've already traded some days, you can input that. Um, but right now, we'll just pretend like I haven't taken any days uh, or I haven't traded any days. So you can put two steps, what I'm currently on, right? You can have step one, step two, or even funded. All right, so we'll, let's pretend that we're funded, or sorry, step one. We'll go in here and add a profit target. So it's going to be 10% minimum trading days. I believe it's going to be 10. Max trading days is 30 the target on step two is going to be five percent minimum trading days is again 10 max trading days is 60. yes this is a journal lucas it is a new journal that is kind of in beta testing again we're trying to add some new features to it we're working with rodrigo he's a performance coach and he's got a lot of data um, that we're going to try and input on the back end so max loss type, you can either have trailing threshold, right? So that's going to be like your step ones. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure if there's a way to like lock it because I know I discussed this on my last video. If you, on some of those step one, on some of those one step challenges, right? When you're up a certain percentage, uh, your trailing drawdown locks at the initial balance. So I have to figure out if that, if that capability is available within this journal. So we have our daily loss and max loss limit. That's basic, right? So you can have uh, end of day trailing. Since it's not trailing, I believe I can just leave this empty. Our daily loss limit is going to be five thousand dollars. Our max loss limit is going to be ten thousand dollars, right? Because this is our five percent daily loss limit and our ten percent max loss limit. All right, so we'll come in here and add the account. All right, so now now we have this, right? Um, we should be able to come in here uh, and our daily. You know, we can set up a daily trading plan. We can see our today's PL, how many trades I've taken, right? It's pretty standard. Um, we have to add at least two trades to see the cumulative PL. Daily trading plan, let's kind of just walk through, walk through this real quick. So account balance. So I typically use it on account balance. All right, so we'll do, uh, let's say we're on phase one, right? I typically do 1% risk per trade. So decrease risk percent per loss to, so if we take a loss, that means we can reduce it to 0 0.5, right? So uh, if you take that first loss, I believe it'll automatically recommend that you decrease your risk. Uh, this is not, uh, I believe you just leave this empty, right? RR per trade, so you have three to one is my typical, right? So it automatically spits out. 
uh, what you should be risking, or what you what you be risking, and your what your percent win rate to stay profitable. Right? If you have a three to one risk reward, you only need to have thirty three percent strike rate. Okay. Profit target per day. So let's say if we are risking a thousand dollars, I'm trying to make three thousand dollars roughly. Roughly. <clears throat> max loss per day. So my max loss is going to be. Um, is 1500 right because that gives you oh sorry i gotta use a negative <clears throat> it gives you one and a half percent so that means you could take two trades right so i have a, a remaining two trades so once this is in here right you have your remaining trades for today when you start adding in your trades and it starts uh populating like it's going to give you recommendations uh, on what to do for your next trade which i i really like about this so I'll, I guess we'll hop over. We could add a quick trade, right? Just to kind of show you what parameters you can add in here. <clears throat> so I'm not going to add one. Um, well, I guess we could, right? So let's just say we took a long, right? Um, we used 100,000 as our position size. So 100,000 is one standard lot, okay? Trade PL, right? So you you could say, let's say we made a thousand dollars, and your your realize our multiple is one, right? So, in our entry model, right, you can create an entry model in here that actually has how many steps, right? And we can add in mistakes. Um, what I think I'm going to recommend to the development team is, um, you know, being able to tag specific comments in here, like custom comments, and actually tag if they're negative, positive, or neutral. Um, that's something that I really liked about Edgewonk and I think is gonna be beneficial to a lot of people. Um, you know, being able to add custom comments, uh, right? Like maybe maybe it's your kill zone, maybe it's, uh, you, know, a, a, you know, you'd have a plethora of things in here that you can use. All right, so that's pretty much, uh, pretty. it's pretty straightforward, right? Uh, we can come in here, add some notes, Right, you can add in, add in pictures, et cetera, et cetera. So let's hop over to entry models, right? So I've already added these entry models in here. We click on 2222 entry model, right? We have our parameters on what we need to see for a specific trade. So 2022, we need to have some type of run on liquidity, a market structure shift, displacement, fair value gap, and you know, return to that. Well, I guess it's return to fair value gap, right? So after the market structure shift, we have displacement, fair value gap, and then I guess rule four would be return to fair value gap. Ideal RR, right? These are optional. Ideal take profit, optional. Ideal stop loss, optional. Optimal time of day, right? And then you can upload a screenshot to actually show what it what it looks like. Uh, and you know, once you're trading these specific setups, it will give you your statistics for each model, right? Which I really like. Mistakes, again, you know, you can type in your notes in here, mistake frequency, exit, enter too early, none, et cetera, notebooks. Um, so another recommendation I want to make for the dev team is to include sessions where you can, you know, uh, segment your times. Well, let's say you want to just review the last two days or the last week. Um, I, I want to be able to segregate that time window and figure out what my statistics are within that time period. You know, maybe, maybe it's a week, two weeks uh, for the month, for the quarter, et cetera, et cetera. Um, basically just as a, uh, you know, after action report. Calculators, we have, you know, futures and Forex indices for, um, you know, account size, risk per trade. It'll spit out like what your stops, you know, how many points you're actually risking and it'll tell you the number of contracts that you can afford to, to either short or go long. Uh, same thing for Forex, right? it'll automatically tell you your unit size. Um, so this is not lot size, right? If you're trading on MT4, you're actually going to have to, you know, figure this out. So, you know, one, actually it, it automatically tells you a lot. So either way, if you're trading on TradingView, it asks for units. And I believe it does the same thing on like FX Trade and some other platforms. But if you're trading on MT4, it'll spit up lot size, which is nice. Uh, and then, then we have our news calendar in here. Right now it's set on the US. You can set it to the entire world. 
or whichever pairs you want to look at. So it automatically skips ahead to the next release, All right? So I believe you should be able to change the time in here on where you're located, okay? So let's hop into last week's trades. Um, this this market really, the dollar is just kind of consolidating. So this account, I'm down uh, a little less than 1% right now. It's like 0.88. So it's really just been a really slow market. So you can see I've taken three trades so far. These are basically break-even trades. Um, I mean, this was up like half half an hour, but I guess it's you know it's okay. So if I go into right my accounts, go to the overview, we can pull up some of these trades and take a look at them. So I don't believe I have all the screenshots shown. Maybe I do. Yeah, so I tried to short a yen when it looked like this, right? I had talked about it filling this four-hour fair value gap back here, right? Stopped out at a full loss. Uh, I talked about that, this little fair value gap in here. Uh, did, did not respect that. It just retired. Okay, so that was a one-hour loss. Now let's go back. So this one was taken on 419, which was, I believe, Wednesday. Yeah, so I, I saw this balance price range in here. There's a one hour balance price range. Right, we have this fair value gap, we traded above it, returned to that, and then we had this nice like three drive pattern lower. So this was up to R, and it came all the way back and stopped me out. So in consolidating markets, right, I'm still trying to trade the same exact way. I'm not, uh, I'm not changing my system, I'm not changing my plan up. I'm literally doing the same thing day in, day out, week in, week out. I, mean, I think uh, I saw a tweet from Omar that said, if you're, you know, are you confident in your system even during periods of drawdown? And for me, I can say, you know, positively, yes, I am confident in my system. So I'm, I'm, do, I'm taking the same trade regardless of whatever the market condition is. Like I'm looking for that liquidity that's above this high back here. Right? It just happened that it did not pan out. Or maybe I should have taken profits a little earlier. But typically, I'm aiming for a one to three because my strike rate on average is about 50%. Right? And I had just shown you previously the math. You only need to have a 30% win rate, a 33% win rate to be, to be profitable or to, to be break even pretty much. All right. So that I, I managed that trade perfectly. So I don't have any uh, mistakes tagged. All right. All right, entered on a one hour balance price range, expecting higher prices. Trade was up two hours, but came back, stopped me on that break even. <clears throat> so, just because this outcome was flat, that doesn't mean I did anything poorly. All right, now let's hop up to the next trade. Again, I was using this balance price range in here to try and go long. Uh, so, this was, tr I, I went long here on the news. I believe this was Thursday, 420. Yeah, so right around 8.30 a.m., I believe, uh, I think it was unemployment, I positioned myself long, same premise, uh, I have this one-hour balance price range and this one-hour fair value gap, okay? But this is this red rectangle is a daily fair value gap. Um, for some reason, I can't upload images. I'm not sure why. I reached out to the dev team already. Um, but I do have additional screenshots to share. I just... Uh, for some reason, I can't upload them. So this one, you know, I believe I've moved my stop up to like right around here once it started pushing higher and came back and stopped me out again. So I'm just going to show you that I'm not like uh, randomly inputting these trades. I'm going to hop over my social trader tools and you can see that I'm down uh, a little less than 1%. All right. So what am I doing? I've taken three trades already, um, and I'm down, you know, 0.88%. So the funded engineer, there's no time limits on this. So my next trade, I'm still taking half percent risk until I mitigate and get back to uh, my initial balance. Okay, and then one, once I'm back at my initial balance or above my initial balance, then I'll go back up to 1%. All right, so that's kind of how I'm trading. I'm trading with like a aggressive risk management. Uh, and then when I start compounding wins, I can start either pyramiding in or uh, taking more risk. All right. So it's really only been three days that I've traded this account. 
So let's hop over really quickly to uh, the charts. So clearly you can see these are the, the positions I took. I've been trying to trade this higher. I still believe it's going to go higher. This to me looks like it was just a Monday retracement and we've been kind of pressing higher. So other than that, you know, I don't have too much to share as far as the pound. Like I like this long wick in here inside of this rejection block. So as long as we don't take out this order block in here, I think we're going to press higher. And ultimately, I want to see the weekly high back here. All right, so let's hop over to the dollar. Again, uh, I already spoke about this. And, you know, I'm trying to reserve live analysis and, and real-time forecasting for a private Discord. Um, it's going to be more lower time frame, actual live markets. Uh, the only thing I can't do is I cannot share my trade levels uh, because I'm trading at so many different firms. If they find out, you know, I'm sharing my entries and stops and targets, if people are copying me uh, pip for pip, like they're going to kick me out. So make sure you read the terms and conditions. They're in all of them. So as long as we we stay below last week's high, I think we are going to press lower. Like this run on this low was not uh, deep enough, in my opinion. Like I think they're going to come back down here and retest that and maybe push into this fair value gap. And then if anything, you know, I've actually was watching these lows back in here uh, for a long time ago. Right, This was back in March of last year. So nothing's really changed for me as far as um, my prediction. I think the dollar is still heading lower as long as you say, well, this weekly fair value gap, again, this is going to take a long time to pan out. So, um, so let's take a quick break here and then I'll uh, pop up this QR code. If you want to sign up for, you know, updates, I am at, at some point going to, you know, make a private discord channel. Um, what we're planning on doing, right? I have some partners. What we're planning on doing is we have a Google form sheet. Uh, and yes, we do want to make it affordable based on where you are located in the world, because we understand, you know, if we charge a certain amount for people that's living in a first world country, it's not going to be the same as somebody else. Like your buying power, uh, as, as far as it comes to the U S dollar is way different. So we're going to have a Google form sheet. We're going to find out, you know, where you guys are coming from and, uh, hopefully we're going to price it accordingly that it's affordable to everybody. So that's my analysis on the dollar. Let's hop over to like the Euro, right? I really like this, uh, weekly close from last week. And we've pressed above this kind of, um, you know, 50% range of this week, this week's wick, this constant point approach in here. So if we can get above this high back in here, then we're going to target back here, right? 1.11, uh, 1.12-ish. So that's kind of what I'm expecting, All right. So when you're looking at the weekly, right, we do not want to pick a top in here. Like this market has not shown us that it's now ready to be sold off, right? You want to just stay on the side of order flow, right? This becomes your mitigation block in here, right? This up candle is your mitigation block. Now the market structure is pretty much shifted. Uh, do we get a deep, you know, a retest into this candle? It looks like we've already done that on Monday. Uh, so let's see if we press higher into the end of the week. So I guess we'll go over Bitcoin, Ethereum, and maybe some of these altcoins. Like I'm trying to get more into crypto because this is going to be a series for um, a crypto fund and challenge as well, right? Like. I, Last week, I mentioned that we have this buy side imbalance, right? So do we get a retest back into this range somewhat? If I draw my Fibonacci retracement, do we get a retest back into equilibrium before we get another push higher into the 30s, maybe towards this high? Um, you know, if we break down and stay below it, then maybe we attack this sell side liquidity, right? But if I'm bearish on the dollar, I'm expecting higher prices. Yeah, crypto fund trader crashed last night for like um, one and a half hours. So that's kind of like what I anticipate trying to do is um, signing up for this challenge and really doing it as like a review. Like, is it is it feasible to, to get funded on their platform and actually 
uh, you know, pass their challenge and what are the issues with their platform, right? We should be able to provide some really good feedback publicly on what they need to improve. I know that their spreads are really, really competitive, uh, something that you're not going to get at some of these other firms. So this is these are the levels I'm looking at on Ethereum, right? I have this breaker in mind. Uh, we have this mitigation block slash breaker, sort of. Uh, do we respect this level and press higher, right? Or do we come back down and, and maybe test this low in here? I would like to see it. I mean, right now, it looks like it's almost just like sideways. So this is not, to me, it's not high probability unless we see something on the daily that we can possibly trade, right? This is, um, to me, is low probability. So we do have this like small fair value gap in here. Right. Uh, let's see. Did this, did this poke this low? What's this low? Eighteen twenty six sixty nine. No, we did not take out that low. So are they leaving that for later during the week? Right. Maybe we have some news. I think GDP is on Thursday. Maybe they push it down lower and then we get a, a bounce. Um, but right now we've had a nice correction. Right? And when I when I recorded that last video, I was trying to see it press higher. But I did also mention like yes, we could possibly retrace back lower, uh, you know, and same thing with Bitcoin. We could possibly refill this buy side and balance. So let's look at maybe XRP. All right, so really this, you can play these as short-term setups, right? We have this range in here. We have this nice, nice range. All right, so do, do, do we respect this buy side and balance uh, this week? or the coming weeks. That is TBD. Um, it's something that you're gonna have to watch. But, you know, again, if I'm if I'm bearish on the dollar, I would like to see crypto press higher, all right? Solana, Solana's in a nice tight range. Um, I like this wick in here, all right? This is creating our swing point. So now we have this range to work with. So we filled in this buy side imbalance quite a bit. So do we press higher from here? All right, something to watch. Now, when I'm trading the, the crypto accounts, they're probably going to be more swing trade positions, uh, unless I have free time to actually day trade them. Let's look at Matic. So we have this fair value gap in here on the weekly, right? We've tested that, rejected. That was a really nice short position in there. Uh, now we're kind of banging around between these levels. So you're just really trying to uh, trade the range in here, okay? So do we come in and take out these relative equal lows first? Uh, and if we do take them out, does it want to push lower to maybe this liquidity before going higher? So right now, we possibly have some market structure, higher highs being created, right? Maybe we see a lower low, or sorry, a higher low before we go higher. We'll see. LDO, I think, has been a pretty hot, hot coin. So on the monthly, this almost looks like we've just taken out liquidity. Maybe we press back down into this range, fill in this buy side of balance, and then trade higher, right? So this is these are long-term charts. All right. These these setups take a long time to play out. And I try and focus, uh, you know, on just a couple decent setups a week. Right. If you see my Forex trades, I'm really only trying to take two or three trades a week. Nothing crazy. Sushi. <laughs> this thing is down so bad. I wouldn't even touch this right now, I don't think. Um, if anything, I would probably be leaning short. This is a really tight range in here. Let's look at chain link. I like the close from last week, but again, consolidation. All right, so if dollars are stuck in consolidation, all right, we're possibly going to see uh, consolidation or some some specific alts, you know, start moving. All right, so this is we're kind of returning back into this order block. All right, again, consolidation. Uh, let's take out take a look at ES. So last week, you know, 
we've had a higher low, a higher high. Uh, and this week, so far, right, it's, already, it's Monday, and we've already taken out last week's low. Like, do we press higher from here? It means we, we want to see the dollar press lower, and we want to see this maybe get back above this volume imbalance, respect this one, right? We have this volume imbalance in here, respect this order block, and then trade higher. We'll see. So looks like to me, it looks like the dollar is already pressing lower. Right? I have this volume imbalance in here. I think we're going to just keep pressing lower. So let's uh, let's do some Q&A real quick. If you guys have any questions, just shoot them off in the chat. I think I've got some already. Let's see. Yeah, so Mobin asks, is it not possible to live feed the accounts data directly? That's something that they're trying to work on. Like the API integration is something that we're trying to work on and, uh, you know, make it as seamless as possible. That way you're reducing the, the manual data input. It's got everything I keep on tabs in one place. Yeah, I agree. I, I like the platform and we definitely want to add in some of that performance coaching uh, data on the back end, right? Very helpful, much easier to use a notion and much more visually appealing. I hope you add a bit more custom. Yeah, so that's definitely something that they're looking at. Um, I don't journal in notion, like I typically was using Edgewonk or Tradezilla. Um, right now I'm having an issue with Tradezilla. The, for some reason, my risk rewards are not being calculated properly for whatever reason. share these notes for previewing and sharing with others. Uh, as far as what the trade journal will be, I think that's what you mean. Maybe sharing these notes. Um, I'll have to see if there is a, you know, a function. Um, but what we're trying to do is like, we're trying to provide coaching services on the back end. So, you know, we're going to be collecting the data and hopefully providing you guys with feedback, you know, whether it's in the form of AI using data that we've collected or if it's actually one of us on the other end, analyzing your data, helping you guys out. And that's part of like a deeper mentorship package that we have uh, in, in the works. Yeah, so Valerion asks, is this the first time you were trying to fund an engineer or have you had payments from them before? Yeah, so they're literally, uh, I believe they just launched like a week and a half, two weeks ago. So this is the first time I'm actually trying them. I think it's a good idea that I, you know, I test them out. I think I've got some major credibility in the space. So I would love to, you know, show you guys live getting funded, getting paid out uh, and my experience with their support. Because I did mention in the previous video that I did, like I, I really like the, the scaling plan and how your drawdown limits increase over time. Right. But again, uh, to pass, to, to actually get approved for the scaling plan, you have to make 10% over three months, right? So that means I probably can't trade a quarter percent risk, all right? Which is kind of why I'm implementing that regressive risk system. So if I go 1%, 1.5% below my initial balance, now I have to go into recovery mode, okay? So what my recovery mode looks like is very slow. I have to crawl back out of that. I'm not uh, trying to keep pressing my 1% risk when I'm below the initial balance. I believe Indus has wiped the house <laughs> into the lower weekly fair value gap. Oh, that's, let me just take a look at ES. <clears throat> I guess which, um, which fair value gap? Oh, you're thinking this one down here, huh? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a possibility. They could, um, they could definitely do that, right? Because we've already taken out the weekly high. But my thing is, like, the dollar looks bearish to me. Again, I'm not so much an index trader. So... Uh, the correlation between the dollar and the indices, I'm not 100% uh, well-versed in to say, like, if the dollar does this, now indices do this, right? How do you use the 90-minute cycle? So I'll get into that in, like, another video. This, this series is more about um, funded trading. So if you guys have questions on technicals and stuff, like, I'm going to, you know, launch a, a live uh, sorry, private channel at some point. So, pound Aussie. 
Yeah, again, if you guys have questions on on funding, like that's kind of what I want to focus on. Correlation with crack. How many weeks marks will get the trade volume? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, like right now the markets are really choppy in, in general. Right? Like this market hasn't really moved on a on a higher time frame basis. The ES hasn't really moved since uh, beginning of April, right? Um, the dollar, even though it's been in a downtrend, right? There hasn't been like a really good. Uh, the last couple of days at least have been sideways, right? I mean, there's setups in here. There's absolutely setups in here, and I made some money in here. Um, but you have to be nimble, right? So what's my position sizing plan when first starting out? I covered this in the first video. So my position sizing plan when it comes to funded challenges, again, it depends. There are some funded challenges that are, right, they give you they give you more time, like uh, Fivers and City Traders Imperium. So the benefits of those firms is, right, they, they have tighter drawdowns. Like they might give you 4 or 5% drawdown and you have to make 7 or 8%. Um, but the benefit is if you trade with them long enough, right? If you're trading with them and you're funded maybe for four or five years, right? You can scale those accounts up to possibly, I believe it's $16 million, which is way more than what some of the firms are offering, right? It's just going to take you a really long time to do it. Um, so eventually, yeah, that's probably my goal is to start chipping away at some of those longer term firms uh, because uh, those those firms are actually providing real capital. Like they're not giving you a demo account. Um, but as far as like a, uh, so for those, for those firms, I would be doing like a quarter percent risk, right? Maybe not even a quarter percent risk, maybe like a 0.1% risk. All right. Uh, it just takes a longer time to do it. Like build up a buffer and then start pressing it, pressing your edge when the markets are clean. Right now, the markets are not very clean. Like we're in somewhat of a consolidation. I mean, uh, the euros had a nice pop today. Right. Um, but again, so those those longer term firms just understand where you are as far as, uh, you know, what is what are the risk parameters of that specific firm that you're trying to take challenge in? Like shorter, shorter term firms. Um, like FTMO and the funded trader where you're only getting 30 days to, to pass a challenge. Like you're going to have to press your risk a little bit, the one, one percent on phase one. Right. And then maybe half percent, one percent on phase two. Could you do a video on trade copier for funded accounts? No. So it's not going to lead to a violation. All right. So faceless FX asset. It's not going to lead to a violation if you're the owner of all the accounts. Like you can go in if they if they give you an issue, like you're the owner of all the accounts, like your name is on every single one of the funded accounts. The problem is, let's say if if I have somebody else copying my trades, right? Now it becomes an issue. Like if I if I give you or if I even take your account credentials and plug it into my social trader tools and that account's not under my name, like they're gonna ban me from using those um from using their their capital so that's a big reason why i'm not i can't share my live trades like maybe i'll share live trades in other markets but you know if i'm going to take a trade in the euro or the pound i'm most likely not going to give you my entry my stops or my targets uh do you think it's wise to go one to one for fun and challenges i don't think so um you're, you're, it's going to be really difficult for you, in my opinion, because you need to have an extremely high strike rate to do that. Um, and right now, you know, you're probably not going to have an extremely high strike rate unless you've back tested it, right? Like this all comes down to your back testing. Like I know my strike, I know my strike rate like in and out, and I know that edge plays out over time. Um, it's just about the timing. So some periods, you know, there's some periods where the market is just completely sideways, and you just mistimed it. Right. Let's see. <clears throat> Have you tried Apex Funding? And again, guys, like, so I was trading futures for a little while, but I tweeted about it a couple times. At the moment, I'm not trading futures prop um, because the cost of maintenance for me, uh, I wanted to make a good amount of money. Uh, so, like, 10 or 20 accounts on Apex or Elite Trader Funding, right, is going to cost me 10 or $20,000 a year. It's not cheap to do. So unless you make 10 or 20 K in a year, right, you're paying that maintenance fee, which the Forex firms, they don't have that, right? As soon as you get your first payout, you get the refund and now you're, you know, free and clear to trade however you want. 
Do you treat Mondays and Fridays? Um, sometimes, like if I can see if the market's, you know, really one sided and there's not a whole lot of news. Like to me, I'm, I'm leading short on the dollar right now. So, you know, today could possibly be a day where you could position, position yourselves um, because I don't believe we have any major news until Thursday. Uh, simple answer for this ZF cash is yes. You can use a demo account on Wanda as a master. It's very easy to do. I feel like I, I honestly feel like I don't need to create a video for this guys. Like I use social trader tools. You can go in there, um, read their FAQs, open up a, OANDA account, uh, demo OANDA account, and figure out how to log in on OANDA and make that your master account. All right. Uh, free way to journaling trades, the probably notion. All right. So, guys, uh, I'm a bit tired. I'm going to try and get a little rest. Uh, I had a long trip to Miami this weekend to meet up with Angelo from the Fun and Trader to do a little interview. Uh, we talked about a whole bunch of stuff. Like I think it's going to benefit a lot of prop traders out there as far as how props are operating in the back on the back end. And uh, now I'm heading down to New York City to meet up with uh, a couple traders and words of wisdom to do a couple podcasts. It should be a good time. So if you guys don't have anything else, um, you know, if you do, shoot me an email. You can use the QR code, and uh, I'll catch you guys in a couple of days. All right? Take care.